I need the link. I'm graceful. You are watching Mini Mini Wave Surfing. Oh, Ethan, I just got a gift mm -hmm. of a 5G Mini Wave cell phone. Oh, that's great. And I tried it recently for a while, but I heard that 5G Mini Wave is super fast. But why I don't feel the difference about it? Can you explain about it? Oh, that's because in Taiwan there is no millimeter wave base station yet. Oh, that's why. But how about U.S. <laughs> or Europe or other countries? Oh, the big operators like T-Mobile, Verizon, they all have established test the base station for millimeter wave in big cities. So you got a big chance to experience MM wave in those countries. Okay, so for me, I'm like watching video a lot. So if I want to download a video, how fast is it compared to the low frequency 5G? Sure, the video of 5G is expecting <laughs> several gigabit per second. That means few seconds to download one Netflix film and you can take it away up to the airplane, enjoy it. But why do we really need really real wave? Can you explain a little bit? Yeah, sure. That's a great question. It's all about throughput. So in the area, the area throughput is associated with uh, spectral efficiency and the cell density and the bandwidth. So as you can see, to establish more base stations is very expensive, right? So bandwidth directly translate into throughput. In millimeter wave band, there are a whole bunch of spectra that are still free to use. So that's why we use millimeter wave so how about what's the frequency that we use it for 5G? Come on, frequencies used uh, in many countries are uh, 28 or 39 gigahertz. People start talking about FR3, so can you explain a little bit about FR2 and FR3? Yeah, sure. FR3 is a new band, new spectrum defined by 3GBB. It spans from 6 to 20 gigahertz. So now I know people start talking about 6 to 20, FR3. Wow, so Mirrorway sounds really good. So why we're not using Mirrorway until today? You know, there's a fun factor. Sir Jagadish Chandra Bose had already demonstrated 60 gigahertz wireless transmission way back in 1895. At that time, he used a very basic Germanian uh, semiconductor devices and along with the whole antenna to prove that 23 meter transmission. Oh, so what happened after 1895? You want to start from 101. Literally, millimeter wave is a wave with a wavelength in millimeter. <laughs> Would you like to hear what you just say? I got nothing. All right, I got you. How about let's start from a wave. This is a typical sinusoid wave looks like. There are many fundamental physics parameters like amplitude and wavelength associated with to this wave. Today we care more about frequency. From high school physics class, we know frequency equals to speed of light divided by wavelength. So for a wave with a one millimeter wavelength, the frequency is 300 gigahertz. And for a wave with a 10 millimeter wavelength, the frequency is 30 gigahertz. That's very close to what is being used in FR2 for a while today. Right, just remember, we just talked about 28 gigahertz. So actually, it's been over 100 years after John Jagadish demonstrated. <coughs> so do we have a better tool today? Or what we can do for better leverage with different technology? Sure. Before getting into a new tool, I like to play a little fun game with you. You know, the dimension of the antenna is proportioned to the wavelength. So now I'm challenging you to draw a one millimeter array antenna with the four patches and the range in the square. Okay. And I'm going to draw a hundred millimeter wavelength antenna. Then we will compare to a comparison. Okay, challenge accepted. Well, let's do it. Let's show our work. Um, all right, as, uh, as I expected, the one millimeter antenna occupy only very little tiny surface area compared to FR1 antenna. It's 
is a big area. So for a millimeter wave, here it comes, larger array. Wow, so this is a real antenna. Mm -hmm. So this is a four by four, it's like 16 elements of antenna. So compared to the original one I draw, this is like four times energy bigger than the original one. Yeah, sure. So the antenna will basically receive four times larger power from the transmitter compared to your paper antenna. And I also discovered there's a black color around the panel. Is that any function of it? Oh, that's simple. That's because that's my favorite color. So if I like red, can I put on it too? Sure, that's easy. If you pay, then we produce, we design the euro color for you. <laughs> And also I found out there are four channel. With the four channel, how about this end related with the 16 antenna? Each RF port connect to four patches. We call this structure serial patch. With this structure, one RF port represent one antenna or one phase control. So we have four antenna here. So Ethan, as you mentioned about the phase control, can you tell us how to control this? Sure. I will show you every detail in next episode. Thank you for watching Millimeter Surfing. Please remember to subscribe, press like, and ring the bell. See you around.